Singapore is harnessing the collective power of tech giants to help make artificial intelligence safer for companies and regulators. It's launched a network that taps the likes of IBM, Microsoft and Google to develop AI testing tools for responsible use and help shape international AI standards. Launched at the Asia Tech X Singapore Summit, the AI Verify Foundation includes big tech and companies across different sectors. Now, they'll help foster an open source community on AI testing and contribute to the Made in Singapore AI testing toolkit known as AI Verify. The move comes as concerns grow over the technology's increasing popularity and its rapid development. We believe in using AI in a responsible way and deploying it for good. But we will also strive to shield society from the most serious AI risks. The private sector and the research ecosystem have rich expertise. They can and must be encouraged to participate meaningfully to advance AI for the public good. Mrs. Cho adds that making its AI Verify testing toolkit open sourced will enable system developers, solution providers, as well as the research community, use and contribute to it in areas like transparency, security and accountability. The move is seen as a good way to help companies understand the AI that they use, adjust it to better suit their own needs and co-develop new and better testing tools. Uh, earlier, CNA's Heidi Ng spoke to Kathy Baxter, the principal architect of ethical AI practice at Salesforce, who emphasized the importance of having ethics at the foundation of building AI. You talked about data collection and to, to really integrate these ethical practices into AI processes, you really need this kind of data. So how, what are some of these metrics for ethical data collection and how can organizations ensure ethical practices when they're collecting such data? Absolutely. If you don't have ethics in mind, if ethics isn't at the foundation of what you're doing and how you're building your AI, it's very difficult to tack it on at the end and actually have an impact. So uh, first and foremost, asking not just can we do this, but should we do this? Is this a problem that, that AI should solve? Then you think about the data sets that you're using to fuel the model. Is it representative of everyone that the AI is going to impact? What are the potential toxicities and biases that are existing in those data sets? So you have to measure those, look for them, and then uh, take it, efforts to mitigate them. And then as you are building the models, you need to get feedback from those that are going to be impacted. And you have to take special effort to reach out to underrepresented communities and make sure that they are involved as well so that harms that you might not predict they are able to identify. And where are we right now on, on that front? A lot of amazing work has been done the last uh, 10 plus years, uh, particularly by women and women of color. It's, it's really an amazing space to see. So there's a lot of really good work that's ha that has already happened. And there are a number of resources and standards. There's the NIST AI risk management framework. Uh, and then, of course, Singapore's AI Verify Toolkit, and they announced today the AI Verify Foundation. So there's really some amazing work that's going into uh, making accessible, responsible AI available. And on the topic of responsible AI, you know, it's the onus on organizations that create these AI systems to make sure that they're transparent. How, would government regulations actually need to be in place to ensure compliance? There are there's survey after survey showing that people are they don't have a lot of trust in AI, particularly the more powerful AI. And so it's in organizations best interests to ensure that they are transparent because transparency leads to trust. And so even if regulations don't require you to do it, it really is in an organization's best interest to be transparent in how they're creating and using AI. And how would a company being transparent about their AI systems, how would that look like for, for a consumer who wants to, to use these 
tools? That is a fantastic question because there is transparency in terms of uh, the purchaser at a company of uh, the AI that they may be using or an auditor. And then there's the consumer. So if you are interviewing for a job uh, in New York, for example, you have to uh, identify that you're using AI in um, your hiring process. So how do you communicate to a consumer how that's used? So uh, being able to communicate in plain language what the model is doing for consumers, but then you give more technical detail for auditors or, or purchasing decision makers. So it sounds like it's really encouraged for companies to really be transparent about yes. what they're doing with their AI systems and at the same time to make them ethical as well. So what are the greater challenges for organizations that are looking to integrate these ethical practices into their processes? First and foremost, I, I think for Unfortunately, many companies, it's a matter of change management. It's a matter of changing the incentive structures of not just measuring the success of a product or a feature based on how much money it makes, but instead evaluating the impact that it has and ensuring that it is bringing more good than harm. Um, secondly, it's finding people with the right skill sets. Uh, there are many AI developers, but not everyone has the background to know how to build AI responsibly. So finding AI ethicists, right now there aren't many. I expect we're going to see many, many people graduating from programs uh, in the coming years because this younger generation really has a, a great deal of passion and, and energy for creating uh, technology that works for society.